This original WSRE presentation is made possible by viewers like you. Thank you. The Blue Dog Artist, George Rodrigue, on this edition of Conversations. He is best known for his blue dog paintings, but in reality, George Rodrigue's work is vastly more diversified. He has captured on canvas some of the great personalities of our time, like legendary musicians Louis Armstrong and Al Hurt, famous Cajun chef Paul Prudhomme, and President Ronald Reagan. He's also managed to communicate a lifestyle, like an old timer telling stories on the front porch, George Rodrigue's paintings of Southern lifestyles and Louisiana traditions tell stories all their own. Blue Dog has made him famous and probably rich, but more importantly, the blue canine has allowed Rodrigue to make a difference, from raising millions of dollars for those in need to using his George Rodrigue Foundation to promote to promote art and education. We welcome George Rodrigue to Conversations. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. Take me back to your childhood. What was it that got George Rodrigue interested in painting? Well, I've always been wanting to paint. In the third grade, I got polio. And I couldn't walk for like a year. And my mother brought me, bought me a paint by number set. It had just come out. Okay. And I didn't like to paint the individual little bitty squares, so I painted on the back end, back side of the canvas. Okay. And that's when I started painting. I, I stayed in bed for about six months and painted pictures with all the paint. And then I found out you could buy just paint. <laughs> <laughs> and so I painted, you know, I found out I could paint anything I could think of. Uh, also sculpted. I did clay, colored clay, and did little animals and and ducks and elephants and stuff like that. And anything I could think of, I had an act of producing. Yeah. This is just something you did all on your own. No lessons, or nobody in the family was. No lessons. No. No. It was a surprise to everybody, and I just started it. And I kept on. You know, there were no art classes in school. There was. You know, I didn't get any formal training. Uh, about in the seventh or eighth grade, my mother decided maybe she asked me if, if I wanted to go to art school. And I said, yes. And she said, well, there's a teacher in New Iberia on Saturday morning. You want to st start there? And I started painting at seventh grade, eighth grade, and I painted pictures, which I still have in my studio. Mm -hmm. And I painted landscapes. I painted quail. I painted portraits. I just had a knack for doing it. Just just whatever it was. That whatever it you. was, you know, and I didn't understand art yet, but I really loved it, and I love wanting to, to, to be my career. Yeah. Which brings me to a question. Is Do you think for most people that, that having that artistic ability to draw or paint, is it something you're naturally born with, or is it something you can learn? I think you have to be born with it. You have to have a skill, and then you have to have a drive. Yeah. The drive is the thing that keeps you doing it, you right. know, because a lot of people have skill, can do that, do it once or twice, but you really have to have an inner inner skill of drive because I went to UL at the time in Lafayette, started studying art. Then I realized that I wanted to go further and ended up in art school school in Los Angeles at the Art Center College of Design, mm -hmm. which we were taught by professional artists. Right. So I got a chance to really sit down with someone who knew how to draw the figure, who showed you how to draw the figure, and, you know, I was there for three years. Yeah. What brought you back to Louisiana? Well, at the time, I, you know, I left on a train from New Iberia, Louisiana to Los Angeles. <laughs> And when I got to Los Angeles, you know, like this was a different world. Right. This was 1964. This was a different world. This was unbelievable. So I really thought once I got there, I'd stay there. I'd, I'd graduate from school and get into professional artists, art art director and, or in the movie business or whatever. Right. You know, there was a lot of opportunities there. So, but as I stayed there and I would come back, during the spring breaks and all this stuff, I started looking at Louisiana in a different way. I looked at Louisiana like this was a special place. Right. We're relating it to L.A. Uh -huh. That Louisiana brought me back, not L.A. kept me. Right. And so I looked at things differently and saw the landscape differently and realized that no one had really tried to capture Louisiana before in a contemporary way. 
because in L.A. when I was there, the first Andy Warhol show was there. So art was really, really in a in a in a sense of changing. Right. You know what pop art was available. You know pop art was coming out, uh, soup cans. You know all this new stuff was coming out. We the students loved it, the teachers hated it. Right. But so I went back to Louisiana and said, I'm going to look at it in a different way. I'm going to look at Louisiana with, with fresh eyes, with the idea of really painting in Louisiana and going back to L.A. and have a show. It worked out well for you. Well, it worked out that I really, did, really didn't realize when I started working in Louisiana that my painting sold there. Uh -huh. It wasn't until a lot of years later I finally got back to L.A. with a show. <laughs> but what I was producing, you know, affected a lot of people in Louisiana. And it, it grew from there. I started painting little bitty oak trees. Where did that come from? Well, looking back, <clears throat> as I needed a symbol, mm -hmm. I knew that. I needed what was my Campbell's soup can. Wow. And my Campbell's soup can, can became the oak tree. Louisiana oak tree, which I cut off at the top mm -hmm. and I only painted the sky underneath the tree because this was to be represented one part of Louisiana that was different than any other part. We had the oak tree, we had the bayou or road, and all the light is underneath the trees and it's very, very dark. And so that was my theme for like seven or eight years, to paint that. Then I eventually turned to people what was a people like looking that came around from the oak tree okay. and, and they were sort of primitive. So because I was Cajun and because Louisiana, you know, it, it gave me a foothold of doing something that no one had ever done in Louisiana. Right. All the early Louisiana landscape painters came from Europe and they came in the 1800s, 1900s, and they painted Louisiana in a very European setting right. with large skies, not really concentrating on the people. And I started concentrating on the festivals and fairs and people and built up, built my own style. For people who have never been to Louisiana, there's an awful lot of character and an awful lot of personality in New Orleans and all around Louisiana. How, yeah. how do you as an artist capture that? Well, there's there's so many things going on in Louisiana. You know, we had we had we had the French, we had the Spanish, we had the Indians already there. We had the the Europe, all the Europeans came there. We had the Mississippi River there. You know, we had the whole black culture there. With the which when the, after the Civil War everything changed again, and so you had this this melting pot of all these cultures, and it was a completely different place. And we had the Cajuns, right which my <laughs> came from Canada. So it's very rich in diverse, you know, uh, colors and diverse smells. And so that's why we have the music is different. Right. The food is different. So the art, which had never been explored, I thought should be just as different right. because we had everything else. You know, we had different languages. We had different religions. We had different means of transportation. All, all of that was completely, but no one had looked at Louisiana purely in an artistic way because in the 60s, everybody was painting or drawing abstract expressionists. Mm -hmm. Nobody, if everybody I went to school with in Lafayette, and their idea was to go to New York and be an artist. I turned it around. I came from LA back to Louisiana and stayed in Louisiana. What kind of response did you get once the outside world, once the folks outside of Louisiana discovered your art? And I'm not talking about Blue Dog, but yeah. prior to Blue Dog. Yeah, well, you're not famous in your own hometown, you know. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and so the further I got away from Louisiana, the more the people who looked at the paintings saw them as a piece of art, mm -hmm. not relating them to the Louisiana landscape or to the people or to the Cajuns. They looked at it as a piece of art and with clear eyes. Local people would look at it and some would like it, some would like it, like, like everything. So I got a bigger response in Houston, Dallas, you know, Miami, you know, all throughout the South, what I was doing because I was selling to collectors who collected art. And this was very different. The, the art was different in the way I structured everything. The people were all caught and tied in. And I, I had a whole series, why I painted the people the way I did was they were cut out and pasted on Louisiana. 
because the Cajuns came from Canada and were pasted. And so I painted them as if they were cut out with a pair of scissors and pasted on, on, the, on the tree. And the light from the inner person to shine, would shine out, not the light from the sky. So I had a whole, I mean, I could talk to you two hours on why these paintings look this way. Right. So it, it was developed over five or six years. I developed this style, which when it got outside of Louisiana, it was very, very different, and I got accepted. Was that, when you paint something like that, do you know ahead of time, do you see it in your mind ahead of time, or do you just go to the canvas and it just comes together? No, this is a development. This is a long development. You know, I started with a tree, mm -hmm. a tree, a skyline, and a foreground. And so in eight years, I developed this whole set of stuff. At one time, I had like 150 oak tree paintings, just black oaks with a sky. But they were all different. I, you, you realize that you can do each one in a different way, different colors, different compositions, different. So you, you're training yourself in that particular mode where you develop your own style. Yeah. Every artist has to have its own style. Yeah. It has to be something that you produce yourself and no one has seen before. Yeah. And that's, that's the key. That's the secret. There's a lot of artists out there, but to do something that you've never seen before, that's, you know, it's, it's, not, it's like writing. Mm -hmm. It's like writing a song, a play, and it's something different. Yeah, it really saying. has to put your own signature in it. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's what a painting is. A painting is a problem that you solve. Never thought just, of it Just like, like a book, yeah. just like a song. Yeah. I mean, there's a problem there and you solve it and you produce something that no one else has ever done before. And so once you're in that position, then you can really do stuff forward. Yeah. And the further you get from everyone else, the better it is. Yeah. Art, you can't, I, I say you can't say it's good or bad. It's how different it is. You know, look at Harry Potter. Yeah. <laughs> you know, how... That's what it is. Yeah. It's something that no one else has done. Uniqueness. It's unique. It's yeah. got to be unique. And uh, you get accepted. And you know very, very early in your career, if it's going anywhere, that's, that's the, what, you know, you, if you're on a track, you know, a thousand people paints flowers, but the guy that paints the best has never been produced. He's the guy that's going to succeed. Yeah. So it's, 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 it's luck. It's chance, it's drive, it's a lot of hard work. Yeah. I heard you say it, it made you extremely disciplined, that art made you disciplined. Oh, yeah, this art is, yeah. yeah. Well, the school in California made you disciplined. You know, you, people say, when do you, when do you want to paint? You know, well, you get up in the morning, you got to go to paint. <laughs> you go to work. Yeah. It's just like that, you know. Do you paint every day? No. Uh, too many things happening, you know. But when I paint, I want to paint at least five to... 12 hours at a time. I need that much time at one particular time to, to create something. And it'll last three days, five days. Oh, you know, I don't paint anything longer than two weeks because I get bored with it, yeah. basically. <laughs> so, you, but it's this discipline that you learn in school, which I learned in school, that you have to follow yeah. to produce something. And you get commitment. There's a big commitment to that. Yeah. Blue Dog, how did it come about? Well, the Blue Dog was after I had painted Cajuns and I was very successful. I had shows in Paris and London and all over the world. Uh, it was the 88 World's Fair, 84, excuse me, World's Fair in New Orleans. And uh, I was commissioned to paint uh, 40 paintings of Louisiana ghost stories. And one of those stories was the Blue Dog, which wasn't called the Blue Dog, which called the Loop Garou. It's a Cajun werewolf dog, okay. a story my mother told me. If you were not good today, the Loop Garou will come and get you at night. And so it's like the boogeyman. I got you. And I painted it blue because the sky was blue and it was sort of a nighttime scene and it was bluish gray. 
and I used the dog I had for my studio dog, which I had for 10 years, who had died like two years earlier. And I used him and not thinking of anything of it, painted it. And I had a show later on, about six months later in California, and I had three or four Loop Garou paintings there, and I overheard the people call it a blue dog. And it changed in my mind. Here in California, people call it a blue dog because they didn't know what Loop Garou was. So I changed it when I came back. I said, I'm going to paint a blue dog. So it gave me an opportunity to get out of the Cajun culture, get out of a more of an international zone that I could comment on life today. Mm -hmm. So I started using the blue dog in situations that, that said something about life today. Uh, commenting, where are we today? What are we doing? Why are we here? And using the blue dog as a symbol, not changing it in any way. Mm -hmm. Not, you know, you're looking eye to eye with the blue dog. You know, it's it doesn't move. It's always the same. The colors is different. And each painting is his own world. The blue changes according to that painting. And it, it gave me like freedom of the colors and everything changed. The composition changed. Tell me about this image right here. This I did after 9-11, actually the day of 9-11. We were in California and it happened that early in the morning and I went to my studio that night to try to forget what, what had happened. And I started to paint the blue dog and it was just too happy. And I decided, well, I'll paint it with red eyes. Mm -hmm. And it still was. And so I painted out the blue with white, to white it out. And once I did that, I realized the color had just drained out of the dog. And it became a very powerful image. It's a huge painting. And I painted the American flag in back of it. And it was just, it was, it shocked me. You know, and we looked at it the next morning and decided to make prints of it. And that was the internet was just starting. And in about two weeks, we raised $500,000 for the Red Cross in New York. Wow, and that's, that was, that's great. Yeah. You know, you look at the blue dog, and you, you, you elaborate on this about, but, but I see the blue dog, and his, to me, his personality is he's just a cool character. He's a, he's a cool character. Yeah. <laughs> but then I look at the, that you just did, the, 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 the God Bless America piece there that we just showed, and, and you could see that, that sadness, that it was just the life had been taken out of him. Yeah, yeah, he was visibly shaken. Yeah. I mean, uh, and I didn't know, I mean, it was the first situation where I used the dog really as a serious, serious comment on, on something happened today. Yeah. And uh, it, it worked really, really well, and people responded all over the country. And we only made 500 prints. We could have probably sold 5,000, but we didn't know at the time. But uh, it was very moving. Yeah, it was a powerful image. Yeah. I want to put up a couple of more of your uh, pieces of art. Uh, hurricane of Blue Dog. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, the hurricane started actually before Katrina. Mm -hmm. uh, we were in Lafayette, and two hurricanes hit in about two weeks apart. And it had been at least 20 years I had gone through a hurricane. And so I saw all this power and motion and the oak trees in front of our yard fell down and so all this energy came out and lost electricity and we got in our car and just drove to California to my studio there. And when I got to California, I had the same feeling sort of, went back to the studio and like the blue dog wasn't the same happy blue dog, but all this energy I had gone through. So I started doing the first paintings were just energy paintings, I call them. They were circles representing hurricanes, and I named each one after a different hurricane. And I actually painted like 75 paintings in three months wow. of all this energy, all this color. And, and you know, it's something, like you, something like that gets in your system, you want to get it out right. and put it out. And later on, I added some of the ones. I put blue dogs in them. Comment on this one here. And this one was after Katrina. And we were in... New Orleans, we have had a show in Houston, so we didn't actually evacuate. We were already in Houston for the show and never came back to New Orleans. And so because of my relief prints and everything, people started emailing and what are you gonna do for Katrina, you know? And, and 
we have all our staff was gone, displaced. We were the only ones that had our home left. Mm -hmm. So it took a while for me to create an image that represented uh, Katrina, and it was the blue dog coming out of water halfway with the Red Cross on his chest. And we did that print, and it really sold well because everybody was looking at the Internet, and uh, we ended up doing like six different relief prints for Katrina, and oh, it lasted two and a half years, raised $2.7 million wow. for relief in New Orleans. And that's, you know, it's a real, we, we were proud of that. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure. Yeah. And, and you should be. Yeah. Um, I'll put this one up. Tell me about this. Again, she kicked me out of the house. <laughs> <laughs> well, I like, I like this one. <laughs> yeah, well, that's a kind of a contemporary blue dog with a, a related, my old Cajun landscape. You know, related it uh, uh, to to the old ways, and because I I like to go back. You know, yeah. I don't I don't always have to paint blue dogs. You know, I'm, I do it because I enjoy it. Right. So each painting is different. So sometimes I incorporate the blue dog with the old Cajun landscape, which I used to paint, and put a new twist on it. Yeah. So it's a Cajun that was. He's stuck by himself outside his house. <laughs> you know. Speaking of yeah. other things other than the blue dog, let me show uh, a couple uh, uh, portraits here. One of uh, President Ronald Reagan. Uh, how did this come about? Well, the uh, Republican Party commissioned me to paint a portrait. It wasn't an official portrait, but it was a portrait uh, for a poster for Ronald Reagan's second inauguration. And I did that. And and I wanted to paint him as an American hero yeah. on a horse and uh, went out to California and photographed him on his horse. And, uh, I had, before that, I had started painting Louisiana governors. Huey Long was my first professional, like, political portrait. And I uh, started doing that using the Cajun landscape. So I found out I could paint, didn't have to paint Cajuns, I could just paint anybody in a Cajun landscape. So that attracted some other politicians, and so, you know, I've painted other presidents, you know, in my own way, and it's been fun. You, you, so you enjoy painting portraits? Uh, yes and no. <laughs> 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 you know, portrait is a, I'm, I don't consider myself a portrait artist, mm -hmm. you know, but I, because I want to add more to the picture than just a face. Right. And so the design of the whole piece is more important to me than the actual portrait. The portrait, it, at the end, it's got to look like the person, naturally. Right. A couple here I, I, I want to show because they're really good that capture Louisiana. Yeah. Chef Paul Prudhomme, and uh, there's Paul. He's a good friend of yours, Yeah, right? he's a good friend of ours. We live across the street from each other in New Orleans. Uh, I did that when he opened his restaurant in New York. Right in the back of his head is a big apple that yeah. represents New York, and you can't see it in there. There's a black and red fish in that tree, <laughs> and that's that's when he decided when you know we went open the restaurant and he had all that problem trying to open a restaurant in New York, and that's when I presented that to him, and you know, great picture. I, I love this yeah. shape. Yeah. Al Hurt. We got, we have this. I I really like this one. Yeah, you I heard it was done for the uh, jazz fest. One mm -hmm. of the jazz fest prints I did. I uh, did three different jazz fest posters, and uh, that was Al Hurt. His wife. He had just passed away, and his wife asked me. He was one of my first collectors of blue dogs. No kidding. He came in the gallery. I mean, when the paintings were like five hundred dollars, <laughs> he came in the gallery and bought. I mean, it was really really nice, and we became really good friends. Good deal. And, let me switch gears here for a second. I know you're very involved in education. Your foundation is very involved in helping schools and, and students around the nation. Why is art important to kids? Well, art, it's a natural thing for art. You know, we all color. We all color, do color in books and everything. So from the relief prints, we, we formed the George Roderick Foundation of the Arts, which we try to infuse arts in all the parts of education. And uh, we give art scholarships in Louisiana, and we travel all over the country doing art demonstrations. And uh, we, we work with other foundations around the country who buy my relief prints, and they sell them at their foundation. So we both make money this way. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to really give something back, and uh, we have art contests in Louisiana that, that you know give art, art supplies and give art scholarships. Uh, 
it's just a way of of showing kids that they can be an artist yeah. you know if if you persist and you want to work hard but it's a way you know art infusion is a way to keep kids in school it's just like not everybody can be in a band not everybody can be a football player you know it's just another way to, to something to do and art can be infused in every part of education you can study art in history math you know science and so there's a whole movement out there of infusing arts in all parts of education, which helps, which proves that it keeps the kids in school longer, right, right. makes them stay. Yeah. And so that's what we, we've, our foundation's three years old. It's out of New Orleans. And, uh, you know, we, we're very excited about it. You having fun with it? You enjoy going and interacting with the kids? Oh, yeah. We, well, we're here in Florida. We're doing the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we, we're doing seven art demonstrations. Yeah. And, uh, I'll get on stage and paint. It was my wife will speak, and it's about an hour presentation, and she'll explain my whole career from when I was in the third grade all the way till right now. Yeah. And they watch me paint a blue dog. Yeah. And and I would imagine that's really something the kids can relate to because of the dog. Yeah, the kids. It started out when I first started painting a blue dog. Kids, I mean, teachers from all over the country started sending their blue dog lesson plans, right. and and their kids painted blue dogs. And from the second grade to the twelfth grade, they would paint a blue dog and write an essay what it meant to them. And so it's it's easier than studying Picasso or right. Michelangelo or something, if. You know, it's a serious thing. This yeah. painting of the blue dog is not just a cartoon. Yeah. So it's easy for them to, to understand it better. And they can do it. And so that's the connection yeah. with the kids. Marvelous. I wish we had another 30 minutes. We're out of time. It takes about two hours. <laughs> <laughs> George, it was a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. We'll look forward to seeing lots of your work. And by the way, speaking of education, you can learn about the various programs available to promote art and education online at georgerodriguefoundation.org. As for us, you can search us out on Facebook. Just search Conversations with Jeff Weeks. And you can also watch some of our past episodes online at wsre.org. Thank you so very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the broadcast. Take good care of yourself and we'll see you soon. Support for this program is provided in part by these corporate sponsors. And by viewers like you.